Hello, followers of Jesus Christ, disciples of Yeshua HaMashiach, who was and is and is to come. I wanted to show you, um, when I did the live stream earlier, some people were asking me about um, Christian music. And um, the thing with contemporary Christian music, modern day contemporary Christian music, it's all it's all man-made lyrics, right? So, yes, you're worshiping God, you're glorifying God, but it's still man-made lyrics, right? And it has its value, don't get me wrong. But the Psalms, the Psalms, which in Hebrew is called the Tehillim, they're meant to be sung. Every single psalm, as you know, when you read it, it says a from the choir master of King David, they're all meant to be sung, right? So, this guy and there's a lot of psalms if you search on youtube you'll hear you know psalm 23 this that but aaron schust is a um he's out of nashville tennessee and he has deep um jewish roots he's not jewish um he's not a messianic jew but he has he's kind of like me we're just um my grandfather was jewish so we have very strong jewish roots and i just it's just it's in your blood you know i guess so but anyways he made uh, he released this album it's called Heaven and Earth the Psalms project and it has 10 psalms carefully selected and they're absolutely amazing I mean it changes the environment totally because this is the word of God this is the actual word of God and it's meant to be sung these psalms are meant to be sung so this is what you hear you actually hear the word of God through music the way the way it was meant to be, you know? So here are just some... When you look for it, you just do a search for Aaron Schust Heaven and Earth album like that, right? And it takes you to this right here. And it's Heaven and Earth. And it's a, it's a, it's kind of like a playlist. Let me show you what it looks like. These are all the, these are all the Psalms. Psalm 8. Psalm 22. Psalm 23. Psalm 51. Psalm 71, Psalm 91, Psalm 103, Psalm 121, I love, because he actually incorporates um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of Hebrew language, and uh, not a lot, but like, like some of his songs, he uses, instead of saying the word Lord, he uses the more appropriate word, Adonai, which means master, and Psalm 121, he actually sings it in English, and then... He has this um, awesome um, Jewish singer sing it in, uh, in Hebrew. So it's absolutely beautiful. Psalm 21, which is a song of ascent, which is what all the pilgrims that went to Jerusalem, they would, they would sing these psalms, you know, when they were going up to Mount Zion. So Hold Me Fast, Psalm 139 is awesome, especially for those of us that are older. And Hallelujah, Psalm 150. You know, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And so these are the Psalms. I just wanted to show them to you. I highly recommend it because remember, this is the word of God. It's active and alive, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing through bone and marrow and discerning the intentions of man's mind and man's hearts. So... You play this, and you play it, and you listen to it while you're going to work. Listen to it while you're while you're while you're while you're driving at work in your house. It's just so beautiful. It just does something to you, you know. And and the way they're arranged is awesome because Psalm eight is is all about glorifying God. It's majestic, right? Psalm twenty two. A lot of people don't know this, but Psalm twenty two. It starts off with, "My God, My God, why have you forsaken me?" That's exactly the same words that Jesus Christ uttered on a cross before he gave up his spirit. And that was a it's a, it's a messianic psalm. And if you read through it, Psalm 22, um, if you actually read Psalm 22, it shows you that it's, <laughs> wow, man, you know? It's absolutely amazing how, how he prophesied his own crucifixion. And everybody there that was at the bottom of the cross looking up at him, when, when he started these words, because they were, they were religious Pharisees, they were experts in religion law, 
they knew Psalm 22 by heart, right? So when he started saying that, wow, wow, wow. I think they knew they were crucifying the Messiah, you know? A lot of scholars believe that. I believe that. But anyways, uh, you have to read it, okay? But Psalm 22 is um, is awesome. Psalm 23, we all know, my shepherd. Uh, that's the first thing I listen to in the morning. It's so beautiful. Psalm 51, it's a song of repentance. Remember when David uh, committed adultery with Bathsheba? Well, this is what he read. This is the psalm that he that he made um, to God, you know, repenting and crying out to God and asking for forgiveness. And so Psalm 51 is great because it reminds us to stay humble. We need to stay humble. Once saved, always saved, yes. But we always, every day we need to self-examine ourselves and, and repent for any sin that may be hidden that that's not you know ask god to reveal him ask god to reveal to you any hidden sin that you may not be aware of so that way you can repent of it and he will lead you down the path of righteousness for his name's sake and then you have psalm 71 which is absolutely beautiful even in my old age it's wonderful for older people Shadow of Shaddai, Psalm 91. Wow. Now, Psalm 91 is it's made for a time such as this, and it's so beautiful. Psalm 91 has great, great power. A lot of people don't know this, but Psalm 91 was actually Psalm 91 was actually written by Moses, not King David. Then you have Psalm 103, Steadfast Love, absolutely beautiful as well. Again, Psalm 121, which I told you about, and then Psalm 139, Hold Me Fast. It's a great psalm about protection and God keeping you in all of your ways. And then Psalm 150 is just a beautiful worship psalm. But again, these are all straight from the scriptures, you know? Nothing is altered at all, you know? It's not actually, it's not the whole psalm, of course, because it will take forever. But it's the, you know, sections of the psalms, but they're actual, it's the actual word of God put to music. So, hallelujah, enjoy it.